Hey everybody, it's CartFab here and today we're going over go-kart brakes. We're going to look at the brake pedal and brake pedal return spring and how to install that on the go-kart, as well as the 4-inch go-kart brake band and the 4-inch go-kart brake drum. Now if you're just watching this video for the first time, this is part of a series that I've put together on how to build a go-kart using this go-kart parts kit that I have in a link in the description. If you're just looking for the brake band or other brake parts, I also have links in the description for those. The first step is to install the brake pedal. The brake pedal requires a 5 16th inch bolt uh, right through the hole you drilled into the frame and then a nut to secure it. You want to make sure there's a little bit of play in there and it can rotate freely. Now if you look here, the tie rod clearance is very important. You don't want to slam on the brakes and ac accidentally hit the tie rods. So we install what are called pedal stops. You just take some 3 8 inch round bar and you weld pedal stops to prevent the pedals from over rotating to contact the tie rods or from coming towards you too far. Next is the brake return spring. This will hold the brake in its disengaged position towards you when your foot isn't on the pedal so it'll keep the brake band from contacting the brake drum just while you're driving around not pressing on the brakes. Next is the brake band retaining stud. This stud is what the brake band will rotate on and it's actually attached to the frame. So you take your drive wheel assembly, make sure it's all put together, put it on the dead axle and kind of clamp the brake down a little bit right exactly where you want to have it and tack weld it in place. If you're satisfied with the weld, finish welding it and then use a little stamp here to put a divot in the uh, 3 8 inch round bar, drill a hole through it, and that will house the cotter pin, which will keep the brake band from sliding back and forth. What you do is you slide the cotter pin through it and bend the edges down, and your brake band can now freely rotate back and forth as you press the brake pedal. Um, since you are going to use this as a pivot point, you want to make sure that this 3 8 inch round bar is welded very strong so I welded it on both sides and the next thing we're going to look at will be the rest of the assembly for the brake rod. The brake rod requires you to cut out uh, a little bit of 3 16 inch flat bar and then you weld that to some quarter inch round bar and that will serve as the other pivot point for the brake band then you want to bend the quarter inch round bar according to the plans that I have on cartfab.com. Next we're looking at the brake rod guide bracket. This bracket will keep the brake band from contacting the brake drum when you're driving because the brake band really doesn't have anything to hold it in place. The clevis pin, that's that thing right there, is what joins the brake band to the brake rod. So. Moving on to the other end of the brake rod, after you have everything adjusted just right, you use a C-clamp to clamp the quarter inch brake rod to the pedal. And you make sure everything rotates freely, make sure that you can actuate the brake pedal and the brake band will contact the brake drum and there's no dragging when it's not. And then weld it all up. I'm TIG welding, but again, you can use any type of welding. Then after it's all welded up, Take a little uh, spin to the wheel, make sure everything works just right, and install your additional cotter pin, cut it, and you are done installing the brake band. So thanks for watching this video guys. If you like it, please comment, give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, subscribe. Last video was go-kart steering, next one is throttle.